If you're a former liberal arts student like me, you might not have thought very deeply about graphs in quite a while. But graphs are back on my radar because of the way that they can be used in machine learning. Let's start with a very brief math refresher. Every graph, from the most basic to the more complex, is made up of two things. Nodes, also known as vertices or points, and edges or lines. The node is one of the data points or objects on the graph, and the edge is the connection between it and another data point or object. Now, graphs have been around since the 18th century. So why are they such a big deal right now when it comes to AI? Let's take a few examples. The first example we'll look at is a knowledge graph. In a knowledge graph, our nodes represent entities, things like people, places, or events, and edges represent the relationship between those entities. What makes knowledge graphs extra special is that they use a third element that describes the nature of the relationship. So if I were trying to represent that Susanna works at Salesforce in my knowledge graph, there would be a node for me, there would be a node for Salesforce, and they would be connected by an edge with the property of works at. What this type of graph is really good at is providing a semantic structure to data. And as we discussed in my previous video, which I'll link down below, having a good way for a machine to understand semantics or meaning of a word or a question is incredibly important to getting good responses from AI. For our next example, let's focus on data graphs. We've been focusing on how graphs are really good at storing complex relationships. But graphs are also an extremely efficient way to retrieve data, especially when you need to run real-time queries on extremely large data volumes, which makes graphs the perfect tool to use in data cloud. In data cloud, there's a concept called a data graph. A data graph is an object that stores the denormalized versions of our data lakehouse objects as nodes and the relationships between those different objects as edges. From the data cloud UI, you could take several normalized data model objects like an individual, maybe purchase history or their browsing data and generate a new data graph that takes the data from all three DMOs and stores it in a denormalized JSON object. The real power is that this data graph is an additional relationship layer that sits on top of our data lakehouse database. This data graph helps reduce query processing time because we've essentially offloaded some of the computations that we would need if we were to query the data lakehouse database directly. Now this is incredibly useful, especially when it comes to AI use cases where you expect real-time responses that depend on querying across huge sets of data. The third and final example is grounding a prompt with a graph. So let's stay with our Salesforce data graph for a moment. Because Data Cloud and Prompt Studio are both built on Salesforce, we can easily take a data graph from Data Cloud and use it in Prompt Studio to ground our prompt. In practice, this would look like writing your prompt, then selecting a data graph to be sent to the large language model as additional context. That model will then take the prompt and the data graph that you sent to generate a better response using a process called Retrieval Augmented Generation or RAG for short. If you'd like me to do a video digging deeper into Retrieval Augmented Generation, let me know in the comments down below. But back to our prompt grounding example. Because our data graph is denormalized JSON, we are able to send lots of related data from across multiple objects in data cloud along with our prompt. This is going to allow our large language model to give a better response that takes into account maybe a customer's purchase history, their browsing data, or even an organization's knowledge base. So even though these things aren't a part of the original prompt and the large language model has never been trained on them, the context can be ingested from that data graph. Okay, so I hope that these three examples have helped illustrate why you should care about graphs when it comes to AI and Salesforce and how different types of graphs can be used to do some pretty cool things in machine learning. <laughs>